I don't know. Are we live? It says we're live. Okay. We got 16 people watching, I think. We're live. Where do you see that? Where do we live? Is that what that is? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Wow. What a day. I know. <laughs> so tired. You guys just blew away our expectations, as always. Uh, we came with a goal three times higher than, uh, than we did with No Peace Beyond the Line, but, uh, but you guys are awesome. You just crushed it. And you smashed this thing, and we are now uh, racing to catch up with ourselves here. <laughs> now, hold up. So, let's see. Uh, let's get some. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, go ahead and throw some comments up if you're watching so we know that yeah, everyone's make, here. It's a good idea. To make sure it's working. Let's say hi. Go ahead and <laughs> hit that. Yeah. Hello, world. Hey, well, our, our comments are working. Mm -hmm. oh, getting everybody pouring in now. Hello to everyone who is just joining us. So you should probably open it on your computer too so you could read stuff. I can barely read as it is. Also, I think the AC shut off again. You may want to go fix that. <laughs> or maybe it's just really hot in this room. Maybe it's just light. Really that. No one's commenting. <laughs> yeah. It's an AMA, guys. You have to ask stuff. Or, you know, we can't. At least it's video, so we're not just sitting here quiet. You can just no, look at it. Might be something weird. Let's see. Oh, the wonderful world of technical difficulties. We might be having some kind of technical difficulties and not knowing it. Don't need to disable comments. <laughs> oh, look. There have been commenting. Oh, oh okay. We can't. I can't see it for some reason. Okay, good thing you opened up yours. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right, so now we have a bunch of questions to catch up with. Everyone's telling us congrats on funding. Congrats, congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we put this so Steve can get Steve in here a little bit. There we go. Wow. So for those uh, just jumping in here, we just want to say thanks again. We did uh, our goals three times larger this time than No Peace Be on the Line, but you guys killed it. It's amazing. We really, we really were questioning whether or not we were going to fund on day one, and we more than did so in just over four hours. So that's incredible. Thank you again so much. We're really excited to get this thing turned around, hopefully in record time, and uh, and just get stuff out to you guys. Really awesome stuff. So we're going to be. Hard at work, starting tomorrow morning. All right, we got any questions, Steve? We have lots of friends joining in. Let's see, woohoo, four hours. We did fund in four hours this time. Pretty great. Let's see, any... Uh, 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 any chance that we can get other ship models as add-ons? Yeah, so we've talked cool. about this a couple in a couple of uh, places. Um, Probably not, just because uh, the the one ship that we have right now, it took about it took us about a year to develop it, to lay it out, to work with the sculptor, to make the tweaks, to do all the little things that we have to do. Now, granted, the first one's always the hardest, so the second one will probably go a lot faster. But I don't want to bank on probably. Uh, we want to make sure we turn this project. One of the one of our biggest goals is turn this project around fast get it to you guys quickly as quickly as possible and uh, you know and if it goes really well we'll have another kickstarter just around the bend and we'll be able to add some more ships into that one uh that said i mean if things go well enough anything is possible so uh, you know if we have a bunch of extra money to throw into a bunch of resources to have a team of people developing this ship to get it turned around in a reasonable time then it's possible but you know, then again, I, I said that I, I, I was really skeptical about funding day one, and we're just, I mean, day one is not even halfway through, and uh, we're, Listen, this we're is doing all pretty new good. Territory. So. Our expectations have been destroyed, honestly. Yes. yes, so we'll see what happens. How about that for an answer? We'll see, we'll, we'll do our best, but we're gonna again, we're gonna be focused on getting this thing done efficiently within what we know we can get done. That's a high priority for us on this one. And I imagine for most of you as well. 
someone, a guy asks, uh, are there natives or cavalry plastics in line for stretch goals? So, yeah, yeah. Yes and yes. Yeah, those are two hopeful stretch goals that we have. Uh, at this rate, they're looking pretty good. I'll say that. Um, We're going to be showing the stretch goals uh, within mm -hmm. the next day. We're just uh, polishing up the graphics. But right. Those are going to be going up very soon. Yeah, so you'll have you'll see some stretch goals. Uh, well, the first stretch goal will be up uh, probably in the next couple days, yeah. All right, what else we got over here, Steve? Uh, uh, to yeah. touch on the ships again real quick, I will say that regardless, uh, this, this project is funded now, so we've got the funding we need in order to create these molds and get this project started. So uh, that means that you guys have basically spoken loud and clear that you are in like this direction. So you will uh, definitely be seeing more plastic ship models in the future, as well as more resin ones as well. All right, let's see here. OK, uh, I, I see someone here has a question about mm -hmm. add-ons. Add-ons are pretty cool. They were just added by Kickstarter. Um, they do handle add-ons now. The way yes. that you can kind of put stuff onto your pledge after you've already picked a reward is you can go in to click the uh, manage my pledge button and it should show a list of add-ons underneath a reward summary. So um, you just have to click the manage my pledge button. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a tutorial to the FAQ to make it clear for everyone because I've gotten that question a few times. Yeah, and the... And honestly, uh, we didn't really have a way to preview it either <laughs> when we were setting up the Kickstarter. So we had to just launch it and hope we got it right. So as you saw, we had a couple little issues, but um, we've ironed those out, I hope. And I think we got everything uh, where we need it. Yeah, they, right launched that, they launched that uh, feature like three days before we launched the Kickstarter. And yes. We're super excited to use it mm -hmm. in branding. Yeah, it's great. I think it's going to help us too. I think it's definitely one of the things that's helping us to do so well this time around. Uh. Since this Kickstarter is looking to be another success, what do you envision as the theme for the next Kickstarter? Do you have a roadmap for future uh, releases? Well, we do, but man, let us focus on this one. <laughs> we've kind of got a we've kind of got a pool of things, if you will, that we are um, that we're thinking about for the Kickstarter for for the next project. Uh, but Blood and Plunder is high on that list. Oak and Iron is a close second. And there's a couple other ideas we got floating around. Uh, I mean, depending on how this project goes and how quickly we can turn it around and deliver and how much of our time it's going to take up. Uh, there's a bunch of other projects like uh, Blood and Plunder Frontiers that we've talked about. We've got a, a few other things in the works as well that um, we're just kind of juggling around and seeing which one is going to be best to throw out next. But for right now, we're pretty focused on getting this done. Um, Okay, uh, will there be stretch goals? We're going to be putting the stretch goals up. Yes, we've already answered that. We're looking pretty good for the first one, for sure. I see a question here. Are these shirts going to be for sale? So this was a limited time shirt. Uh, we hope to bring it back soon. Mm -hmm. But for now, it was just a, a sort of an event that we held. This one's a classic. This is like years <laughs> and years old. I'm not sure that anybody wants this thing. It's kind of basic. Yeah. I made it for our first Kickstarter. Yeah, it's not a bad shirt, but it's a. Uh, 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 but this many... one we will probably make more of. So, how many weapons does each sailor screw come with? So how many weapon uh, I don't have. That's a good. I, I probably that's something I probably should have remembered. Uh, I will say that as of right now, a lot. So um, like two or three per model. Do you think? At least, yeah. Uh, probably, I would say at least three per model, more or less. More really, because. Every sailor, you're going to be able to. We've we're still doing some very minor tweaks to that mold, uh, just in trying to move things around and to see where we're going to fit certain things. Uh, and um, so that th there's going to be enough to do. I believe each sprue will have enough to do uh, six. It's going to have six torsos on it. It's going to have, I think, um, I want to say 10, 12 heads, something like that, maybe more. Uh, and then it's going to have, uh, I believe it's four muskets and four pikes and then, a, a lot of pistols, uh, some cutlasses, some open hands that are just empty, it's like pointing or gesturing and stuff like that. Um, so it'll be quite a lot cause you'll be able to equip every single model in there with two or more pistols if you wanted to. 
So uh, since say, since the pistol is you know the 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 main weapon of the sailor in Blood and Plunder, and we have options for brace pistols, and I forgot of course the blunder buses and the grenades, so those are in there too. So a lot, a lot. so a lot, a lot. <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna we're working on getting an image of the sprue up. Uh, so as soon as we have that, uh, not not the actual sprue, but the uh, the, the the layout, the kind of image they gave us. Uh, so as soon as we have something closer to final on that, which will, should be, we might even have this week. Uh, we we will share that. Yep. Uh, so that kind of leads into this next question. So Gordon asks, how does the plastic ship compare to the resin? Is there any benefit to plastic for the ships? Sure. So plenty. There's yeah. The biggest one for me personally, as a as an admirer of all things in this period, is the fact that we have the well, one is price and the accessibility and the ability to customize and things like that, but. Well, to me, the biggest thing is that we all of the rigging parts, so the masts, the spars, um, the bow sprits, and all these things. These are all now. Um, these are all going to be sculpted to a, to a much higher level of detail. Because I mean, our previous kits are dowel, which is cool. It looks good, you know, but it doesn't look quite as good as these. Uh, in the videos and stuff we've shown, we haven't. It's hard to kind of see that, those details. If, if you can see it pretty good in the renders, I think. Uh, but there's also the option, of course, because everything's on a sprue to have uh, more. Op We're going to have things like dead eyes and and pumps and all kinds of little accessories like that that are just really nice little detail bits that are going to add a lot of character and customization to each ship. So that's really the biggest advantage. It's also just a lighter model. You know, so this uh, the 3D prints that we have, which are not the action finally, but the 3D prints are uh, su surprisingly pretty heavy. <laughs> I mean, they're not as heavy as the resin, but uh, they still got a good heft to them, so they feel pretty nice. But yeah, that's... Um, I mean, just the fact that these plastic ships are broken up now allows yeah. us to do a lot finer detail. There is a higher level of detail, yeah. Uh, even though resin is capable of, of casting tremendous detail, uh, our resin ships are casted normal. into a single piece. Uh, we didn't want to do multi-part resin kits. That tends to be kind of a pain, in my opinion. Uh, so with plastic, with when you know you put with using plastic cement, they go together really well and stay together well. And if, if you have experience using plastic models and plastic glue, you know this. Uh, but um, so it lets us since all the parts are separated, there is obviously some assembly. There's a lot more assembly involved in a plastic ship kit, but it is uh, it does let us put a lot more little details into things. What else we got, Steve? Um, looking through here. So any chance some of the new characters will be available separately? Right now, uh, because of the way we're manufacturing, because of starting up this mm -hmm. process, it's easier or it's not really feasible for us to sell things on their own just yet. Right. But maybe after the Kickstarter, if there's enough demand, mm -hmm. we'll be able to do single sell, like, you know, selling each pirate on their own. But for yeah. this Kickstarter, it's just the unit boxes, as you see. Yeah. And then uh, we'll also be doing, there's going to be, there's a bunch more characters that we're not, that we're not doing models for right now, uh, but those will be um, those will be options we can do later. One of the cool things about expanding into plastics is that it's going to give us more room to do more characters. So we're going to have the lineup in plastic, and then later on we'll be doing some slower releases of uh, some characters in metal as well. So you've got those options. Is there any chance to see a terrain add-on? Well, sort of. I mean. Keep watch on those uh, on the box of plunder. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some really cool stuff, some little bits uh, to help you flesh out that piratical world. Right. But um, as far as like big terrain pieces, we don't have any planned right now. Um, but I mean, this Kickstarter is really blown up, so we don't know where we could go really by the end of it. Yeah, it's a lot easier to design a like a house than it would be a ship. There's yeah. a lot of curves and things that go into a ship to make it complex. But um, it's yeah, we're we're thinking about it. It's uh, I'm not sure the chances are right now. If you are looking, if you're new to this game, or even if you've been playing for a while, maybe don't be aren't aware of it. Uh, we're now carrying the range of foreground ports of plunder, which are MDF kits that come with a render powder that makes them look really nice, like resin, and um, they're in, they're really awesome kits. Uh, some of the pictures you've seen where you see some like some buildings in the background in this Kickstarter. They're all using those kits, and you can get those on our on our website right now, and they're presently in stock and available. So that's a good option right now if you're interested in some terrain. So will we ever do Ghost Pirates? No, we're a historical game. Uh, 
Will we be able to customize legendary commanders? I mean, yeah, they're a plastic kit like any other. It's up to you. Yes. Now, there's some of the models may have a, an option or two here and there. Um, Black Caesar hasn't been sculpted yet, but I'm looking into uh, doing. He's got a blunderbuss in the in the image. He'll probably have the option of holding a blunderbuss or a pistol. Uh, blunderbuss being an option there. Uh, we may do a couple things like that, but uh, they're they're all the, the the characters are all sculpted to be uh, as you see them for the most part. Now, of course, since they're plastic, they're very easy to customize and cut up and use the bits that we're going to be putting into the various kits to mess with, of course. So, can you talk about a little bit about what's inside the sailor and soldier box? Yeah. So, uh, the sailor box is the one that we've gotten tons of traction on. And we've got, uh, it's mostly done, ready to go. So I can tell you a lot more about that one than I can about the soldier box. So the sailor box has, uh, it's going to come with 12 models total. It's going to be basically two sprues of six models each. And as well, and then a sprue with bases. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then on each of those uh, sprues, you're going to have six torsos, like I talked about a little bit earlier. And then you're going to have uh, a plethora of head and weapon options so that you can customize those units to be various things. So the head, like some of the options in there will let you make the sailors look a little more French or Spanish or English or Dutch. They kind of go in those directions. And uh, they're going to let you make a whole bunch of different types of units that are presently in the game. So right now, those that kit will work for things like uh, Freebooters, Filibusters, uh, Forlorn Hope, and Fon Perdu, um, Sea Dogs, Marineros, the Leiden, European Sailors, you know, Marans, everybody, all, all the sailors and all that. So they, it's a super flexible kit. Does a lot of stuff. You could even use them for Lanceros. There's some African head options in there and stuff like that. And um, so you can, it's a pretty flexible kit. Um, the Soldier Kit, uh, right now we've done the base six models for the kit with their base setup with a tricorn mus uh, firelock musket with a uh, socket bayonet and cartridge box and all that. Uh, what we're working on now is we haven't fully started laying that mold out. We're trying, we're creating options for that with our sculptor and we're doing grenadier head options as well as, um, as well as some different uh, head options for an earlier period. So the hats won't be tricorns, it'll be more of just a single cock or something like that. And uh, as well as bandolier options and firelock muskets instead, I mean, uh, matchlock muskets instead of firelocks. So that you can use them as a little bit earlier, or even in period as a uh, lesser equipped soldier, since they weren't all fully equipped with the fire locks and cartridge boxes and all that yet. So that's the plans for that box right now. Uh, we're gonna see. I I don't see why we couldn't get those things in there, as based on what I know so far. But you know, the engineers helping us put the molds together might tell me we can't fit some of this. So uh, we'll see what we could do on that one. But uh, that's uh, that's the direction and the plan right now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so Matt Price wants to know what got you into pirates and what inspired you to make Blood and Plunder? Good question. So what got me into pirates is I couldn't even tell you it's from such a young age. I have a picture of myself dressed as a pirate, which apparently I requested at like three years old. So <laughs> uh, I've always been drawn to anything kind of nautical and swashbuckly in general. Uh, and uh, the more I learn about uh, American and, uh, you know, North, uh, not like necessarily United States, but, you know, all of the Americas, colonial history, uh, it's just super fascinating. And pirates are such a big part of that. They helped shape everything that we know uh, in this uh, in this region. So that's uh, that kind of has always driven me toward it. Uh, the inspiration for this game came about. I was playing another uh, pirate game that has now gone under. Is no longer available or in print. And uh, when that went under, my gaming group kind of stopped playing it. So we, I just had the, I just said, why don't I take a shot at designing my own game? And I did over a few years. <laughs> then I shared it with my our other partner Alex Aguila, who is um, thought it was great. We talked about starting a game company to publish it, and then uh, here we are. That's the short version. I've kind of I've talked about this on a few podcasts already, so check check out some of the podcasts and the links, and I give you the long version of that one. Uh, what are we getting? A guy brush? Am I saying it's guy brush three four? Three, four? What? Is? Guy brush three four? Really? Where is it? Uh, Where is it? Point it out here. Okay. 
I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not familiar. We'll Google no. it later. And yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. Are you attempting to deliver sooner than a year? Uh, no, probably not. We're pretty sure now, this being our fourth Kickstarter, that it's going to take us about a year to deliver. If, um, I mean, we hope. We Best case scenario, you know, we can deliver earlier, but it's never best case scenario. As we've seen this <laughs> year in particular, yes, things can go very, very wrong. They can. Uh, I'm, I'm a little more optimistic than Steve. I always hope we can. Uh, hopefully I'm right and he's wrong. But, uh, you know. I've been proven right. Every but uh, I think a year is very feasible at this point. Will you offer separate plastic screws to the mask, et cetera, so that your resin ships can include those extra details? Uh, well, actually. What's that? Sorry. Well, the, basically, can uh -huh. you use the plastic pieces for masks for their old resin ships? I don't think they'll fit. Um, yes and no. We haven't actually tried. <laughs> we just so we've we've uh, we we got our first prints of the of the ship just a few days before launching. So we were scrambling to get it together and uh, and get pictures taken and have our videos and stuff. So I haven't really messed with that. Potentially, yes. Um, the the Mass size should should be the same, so it might fit in there. But since we haven't started laying the ships out in the mold yet, I can't tell you we could sell those sprues on their own because they may have to fit. The ship's going to take a lot of sprues as it is, so I don't want to spread it out any more than it already has to be spread out. So uh, it's likely that parts of the rigging will be mixed in with the uh, with the hole and such. So. Um, you could do it, but you'd have to basically have an extra whole extra ship as of right now, as far as I know. So, uh, okay. Do you guys have any pre-production samples you could share with us, like three D prints? Well, actually, everything you yeah. see on our Kickstarter is three D prints. Right. Um, we don't have some actual manufacturing samples yet, but yeah, you know, as we print more and we get samples, we'll definitely be sharing them on the group. Yeah, and I think we've got a bunch of pictures that we've taken that we haven't really showed yet either. And these are all, many, many of these prints were being done before we actually finalized a lot of the models, but it gives you the, the direction. You know, anything that, anything you see, we're not changing any kind of styling or anything for the most part. It's mainly just improving the models and getting the detail sharper and better. A possibility of upgrade kits to allow previous ships into the 18th century with innovations like the wheel and such. Yes, absolutely. So uh, 18th century, not just brought about the wheel, of course, but uh, lots of innovations in just rigging and ship design in general. So uh, there will be all the all the previous ships. The real the the whole designs that we have really function pretty late into the seventeenth. I mean, into the eighteenth century for the most part. And the present sloops in the Kickstarter definitely go backwards as well. That sloop will function easily th throughout the last half of the seventeenth century. Uh, especially there, there's there's an option without the beak head that you could do which is a little more fitting for that one i think but the um but yeah the big there we're gonna have some of those upgrade options in the book for the 18th century uh, so yeah that'll be in there and for those who play what they will mainly do is they'll help you to uh it makes it they'll make it easier to pass your sailing tests that's what they're doing presently. So, And it's very useful, let me tell you, especially asks, if you're doing a lot of attacking. Sorry, Joe asks, uh, how feasible is it for older ships to remain relevant for this game? Oh, completely relevant, yeah. Since we're... So we everything we have is based on a point system that has a... We don't just uh, guess points and say, yeah, it feels like, you know, 10 points or whatever. You know, we have, a, we, have a, we have a formula that we use to put it all together that so far held up pretty well, as any I think any uh, veteran Blood and Plunder player would probably tell you for the most part. So the um, all of the ships and even the 17th century units will will com are completely compatible with the 18th century ones. How much you want to mix your time periods is totally up to your group. For more official tournament style play, you know, depending on who's running and organizing it, it could be, uh, you know, a, a specific event might be limited to a certain range of years in order to keep it just to a theme, right? But uh, the point system is going to work across any time period we move into. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so everything will be pretty balanced and relevant among themselves. So won't change much. Um, so Matt Price is asking about the Kickstarter search goals. And, um, 
and our other gold. So right now we have two separate ideas here, right? So mm -hmm. we've got the box of plunder, which is going to be lots of free goodies for everybody to earn during our Kickstarter. And we'll have different reasons for giving out a lot of really cool free stuff. Um, but our stretch goals are there. So we're going to have mostly three main stretch goals, which are our planned unit boxes, which we've talked about. Right. Uh, what are they again? The cavalry? This first one up will be militia. So a box of, of militia. Then we've got natives. And then we've got cavalry. And then cavalry. So uh, I'm going to have graphics up for those very soon. Uh, that should help clear things up. And then, yeah, we'll, let, let, I want to give away as much free stuff as possible. So just watch out for those commissions. And I saw just before we got on here that they were already starting to get a lot of a lot of those commissions being uh, being worked on. So awesome for that. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry I keep banging on the table and moving stuff. I'm gonna put my hands on my knees so I can't do that anymore. Uh, I think this says, uh, do we have plans to release the unit cards as a PDF? I, yeah, I think uh, unit uh, cards as a PDF. Have we not done that? We have. We did that for Oak and Iron. Uh, honestly, we had thought about it, but I suppose that's an option. I, we can definitely consider that. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. Oak and Iron was more of a uh, it was done more for because during the, uh, the the lockdown period, we wanted to make some cards available for people playing on Tabletop Simulator uh, for our campaign and such. So uh, that was the uh, that was the aim there. Dan Carlton asks, Mike, who is your favorite pirate? My favorite pirate? Steve Bonnet. Steve Bonnet, yeah. Steve Bonnet. Steve Bonnet. He's uh, such a weirdo. I like him. What's your favorite pirate, Steve? Blackbeard. <laughs> of course. Blackbeard, Edward yeah. Teach. <laughs> He's not my favorite pirate anymore. He did not help me out last night. Not at all. I like his watch. <laughs> Uh, have you snuck your own face into the plastic screws? We actually, I'm not sure that mic has actually been used so far. No, not yet. The, the main problem, of course, is that uh, beards were not a popular uh, thing in the 18th century or 17th century for that matter. So There's one guy with a very famous beard. So. Except for one guy, yeah. But obviously, you know, I don't look anything like that one. So, <laughs> How do you get the Cannon Crew box of plunder? So the Cannon Crew... Uh, pieces it's just going to be yeah right now we have up for grabs uh for the box of plunder in addition of cannon crew options yeah kind of like weapons options for the miniatures for the sailor's box mm -hmm. and we're going to give them out for free as long as we hit that right uh, so every box of plunder so far is going to come with one of those kits it's enough to basically make one gun crew and uh what it'll do is it'll replace the all the models are being done so that the wrists the the all the shirt sleeves uh, where where the where the arm meets the sleeve, that part is removable, so you could swap different weapons and and pieces and such. So uh, those weapon those uh, sorry those artillery tools will slot into those pieces, so they'll fit into the sailor sprues as of now, and uh, possibly uh, the soldier and militia one as well. Can't promise that just yet, but that's the that's the the intent. So. But definitely on the center. I love the Open Iron campaign. I'm so happy they love the Open Iron campaign. Yes. How will the American Indian factions work in this game? Uh, the same way they already work. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with our No Peace Beyond the Line expansion, we added uh, a, a whole bunch of Native American factions. Now, uh, during the 18th century, uh, the Native American factions in North America start to get uh, a little more accustomed to since they're since they're more they're dealing with the english and the french and the dutch well not so much dutch anymore but the english and the french and they're uh, who are willing to trade with them and treat them as you know as as a as another nation so they they pick up a lot of firearms and learn learn how to basically match and exceed european tactics so they you you've got a little bit of a taste of that in our new braves unit that we released via a fire starter uh, recently so you'll see some of that in that unit um but the well uh you know if you just check out our no peace beyond the land expansion you can see how all their stats and mechanics and factions and units and everything so they're all in there gotcha. so i think we have some if you check out some on tabletop uh videos i believe we play a few games with the native americans i know at least two 
So you could look through there and try to find some videos and you can see them in action for yourself. Um, okay, will the deluxe rule book include uh, the rules for the old and that will include old and new rules? So the, the deluxe rule book is going to be the latest right. version of Blood and Plunder, including errata and such. You know? Right. Uh, the amount, if you have no piece beyond the line, you know that there is a lot of stuff in that book. <laughs> so it would, there would be, if we put all the stuff in that book along with all the new stuff that's coming and the rules, that thing would be like five inches thick. I mean, it would be just humongous. So that unfortunately isn't an option. Uh, we'd have to charge like a million dollars for that book. So uh, no, this book is going to be the new revised rule book, which uh, is just, you know, we're just kind of doing some reorganization for the most part. It's the same rules. Yes. But your uh, old rule book is not a cleaner and all of the errata that we found over the years and the decisions that have been made right. are updated in this book. Right. But it's essentially the same Blood yeah. and Plunder rules. So you're getting that book and then you're getting the contents of, uh, you're getting the, um, the Raise the Black expansion in one book. If you have our present red leather bound book or leatherette book, it's the same. I fail you. You failed Blackbeard. No, no, he failed me. Anyways, moving on. Uh, can you talk <laughs> about activation cards? We have a new player who doesn't, uh, who, who's curious about how the activation cards work. So just a really brief sure. overview. Sure. Yeah. So, cards. so the activation cards in Blood and Plunder, uh, it's essentially a regular deck of playing cards. So if you have regular playing cards, you want to just get into the game, that works fine. Um, the ones we make simply make it easier because all the game rules that go along with the cards are printed on the card so you don't have to reference if you don't remember something. So the way they work is you draw one card for every unit you have presently on the table. And then those cards are going to determine your initiative and how many actions you get. So you pick one of your cards and you put it face down on the table. Your opponent will do the same. And then once you've both done that, you flip them over. Whoever has the higher valued card suit, which the order is spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs, uh, in that from highest to lowest, whoever has the higher valued card suit will be able to activate units first. If there's a tie, you use the number on the card to break the tie. Now, uh, higher suits typically give you less actions than lower suits. There's three training levels in the game. There's, uh, there's inexperienced, trained, and veteran. And trained units being the most common, uh, on a spade, which is the fastest card, a train unit gets one action. Whereas on a club, the slowest card, a train unit gets three actions. So you can do a lot more out of that club than you can with the spade, but you're probably not going to go first at activation. And then you're going to keep activating units back and forth in the same way. Um, and that's uh, it's one of the really, I think, uh, one of the things that really sets Blood of Plunder apart from another game, from so many other games where initiative is random. And you just got to kind of deal with it. So in this, it puts you in a little bit more control. gives you a lot more tactical choices and decision-making. All right, what else we got? Did you say the natives would be uh, in uh, northern tribe garb or the style of the island Viridian for this? So uh, I was kind of hoping to find a way to do both, but that's probably going to be too ambitious. <laughs> that's why the natives are in the middle and not one of the first uh, stretch goals. I'm trying to hopefully get some sculpting done and, and talk to the mold makers and see if we can see how much I could get away with. I would like to get a really flexible kit that can do a lot of stuff, uh, but we're probably going to give a preference to the uh, more Caribbean style unless you guys totally overrule us and say you'd prefer the others. I know our present uh, Caribbean line is pretty complete, uh, in metal, but uh, the option to do it in plastic, I just feel like there's so many they have so many options and upgrades that we can do a lot with it. And then uh, with a the more Caribbean theme too, they'll also function as as uh, maroons or black caribs, which is which is I think a nice touch and add, add a lot of flexibility to that kit. Uh, Preston says he's hoping for the north. He wants to see <laughs> north star. Regardless, the North American natives are still on uh, very high on our to-do list for uh, for metal releases in between uh, now and the delivery of this project. So, do you have any planned tweaks for the rules this time? Are there any big differences? Not presently. Uh, the only one thing I would say that's pretty significant is already kind of in play for by most groups playing, and that's that we're going to 
the art the uh, the rules for ranging in with artillery that we added as optional rules and no piece beyond the line. We're gonna make those standard since it seems like most groups that are playing regularly prefer those and tend to use those. So since that's the case, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and make those the official ones. But uh, other than that, not nothing nothing so far. We're going to be we're going to be exploring potential things, but nothing very significant. Again, anything we do would be presented in an errata form also. So if people who currently have the rulebook and aren't necessarily interested in the 18th century stuff can still uh, keep your... You don't have to you know, buy stuff you don't want to keep to be able to keep playing the game and be up to date with it. Well, are there going to be rules for mortars and tanks? That is a very strong possibility for the Raise the Black book. Um, we're working on rules for that stuff. But there's also a fortification supplement that, we're, that we've got going on that uh, our friends at Blood and Pigment ha now have a small, they, have, they give you kind of a teaser of it. And uh, Liam Taylor, who helps us out a lot, have been working on. And um, mortars, I feel, are really fitting for that book. But, you know, if we have room and raise the black, we might see them in there. Um. Are there any plans for Dutch models? So this has come up a few times. Um, mm -hmm. You know, let's just talk about how sure. these models can be used for any faction. There's going to be options to right. fit those factions. So with the exception of the Native Americans, um, who stand out quite a bit. Right, European time. Yeah, all of the European nations. Um, the, all the models we're releasing in this Kickstarter, uh, with the exception of the commanders, are all designed to be uh, more generic in as they can function for any nationality. So we will have parts that will lean them more towards one nationality or another. For example, with the soldiers, you have uh, some options for like cockades that you could act, add to the hats, as well as the shoulder tassels and little bits like that that lend to certain units and certain nationalities. Uh, in the case of the sailors, you have multiple head options that represent this, uh, as well as some weapon options. Like we've got some miglet lock pistols that would be uh, more common among Spanish sailors, um, as well as uh, Spanish style cutlasses and some English style cutlasses and Dutch, etc. So, those are some options that you'll have. So, the, for those of you who uh, who can who can discern the differences, you'll be able to get a little more to your liking. But they're still made to be generic to be used across any of the European factions. Can you give us a quick uh, kind of summary of some of the factions we can see inside of the soft cover rulebook? Ones that are going to be covered. Yeah. So definitely the one, the two that are going to be for sure going to be in there is you're going to you're going to see the uh the pirates and you're going to see the british because those are the the those are the characters that we'll have in the box um there are some things that we're thinking about adding in we're, we're thinking about possibly doing more in the in the direction of additional content that's from things like characters and such that are no piece beyond the line expansion May, we may move those into the main rulebook in, in place of some of the extra factions since we have so many books with different factions available, but we haven't totally decided on that on that move yet. So uh, if that's not the case, then you'll probably see a sampling, probably a single faction or two of each nationality that we have in the game presently, as well as some basic units for all those. Uh, Gordon Tucker asks, he wants to know about the Firelock RPG? Yes. Oh, where's that coming? Where's that? So uh, we've talked about this quite a bit. It's uh, under the black sail. And that's a forthcoming thing that we've been working on in the background. It's being developed by Tim Korkloski of uh, Ragnarok fame. And um, it's well long. It's going to share a lot of information of what's in, especially historical background information primarily, of what's in the Raise the Black expansion. So those are gonna, he's going to be developing that alongside while we're doing uh, the expansion book on our end. And uh, we're looking to hopefully release that book sometime next year. So I think... Right. Uh, Take your time, uh, Steve. It looks like I missed a <laughs> question on Spanish models that's says will there be 18th century spanish models but you know that's a uh, yeah so that's kind of uh, covered in the one about the dutch it's the same deal um 
like uh, so for example the the cockade spanish soldiers typically had cockades especially uh you know if you've ever been to uh saint augustine here and been to some castillo de san marcos they have the all the soldiers wear the cockade on their hat so yeah little little details like that to help separate them as well as uh hopefully shell i mean uh cup hilted swords as options uh, Armin, I'm not sure what Armin's asking here. Models to complete the list of special characters from NTDTL. Oh, yes. I know. <laughs> yes. So those are, you can expect much of that to be in uh, some of the uh, things that come into the, the plunder boxes, uh, as well as what's in the sprue kits already. So since the units are more customizable, like, for example, you know, we're always going to have an option for a pointing guy in there. He could be a commander. He could be... Uh, a veteran, he could be, you know, things like that. Uh, now we we are hoping. I'm I'm hoping to maybe be able to sneak in a priest or something like that, uh, if they'll let me, because uh, we have a lot of sculpting to do as it is. But <laughs> uh, regardless, we're definitely, if if not anything, not in this project. Those things are all pretty high on our list as well to do in metal eventually. So. Uh, Gordon Packer wants to know if this RPG is going to be. Uh, independent or more like BattleTech, where its RPG is integrated into Blood and Plunder. Both. Uh, it's going to have the options for both. You could run it fully independent. The Tim Korkloski is designing it. Wants to be able to. You can play it full theater of the mind, or you could integrate it with your Blood and Plunder to fight battles and do things like that. So, since the Corvette is the only non-resin model ship, would you expect to remake it in plastic models? Right now, we're not planning on remaking all of our ships into plastic. We're going to um, kind of make new ships in plastic, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the sloop is the sloops that we have now in this project are not replacements of the original sloop. The original sloop will continue to function as it is. Uh, these are different types of sloops. So the original sloop is just a sloop. Uh, the two options you'll get for the sloop in this Kickstarter is the Bermuda sloop and the Balandra, which is just the Spanish word that means sloop. So that's just a way to do a smaller sloop, essentially. Uh, Alex Aguila wants to know what's in the expansion book concerning factions. Yeah, well, he could. I mean, if he could just show up once in a while, he'd know that. But... <laughs> so, uh, in the expansion book concerning factions, so. One of the most exciting ones to me, um, obviously, aside from the obvious one of the different pirate factions. So there's going to be multiple pirate factions. So you're going to have uh, one. If uh, if you know your pirate history well, you'll recognize the name, the Flying Gang. The Flying Gang will be one of the options. You have regular, you know, stock standard pirates, of course, uh, as well as a few others. But to me, one of the most exciting is the um, the addition of regular army formations so we kind of have a little bit of that and no peace be on the line with the expeditionary forces and such but uh realistically those are you know they're not quite to the same caliber as some of the units uh get to in the 18th century or we start to develop uh, all sorts of new uh, tactics and and ways of of uh fighting such as uh, platoon fire and things like that. And there's going to be a lot more coordination and professionalism within those army units that are going to be, uh, you know, you're going to have an expensive army, but a really solid, disciplined, highly performing army. I mean, they're going to make, a, it's going to be a new scale of elite army. And <laughs> so far they've been doing pretty good. Um, uh, they're, they're a lot of fun to play with. They're super flexible with their socket bayonets and their ability to just do so many crazy things. So, uh, those are those are some those are two that I'm really excited about. You're going to expect to see a lot of updates to a lot of the existing factions. So obviously, English militia, Spanish militia, French militia, privateers for all of them, you know, and basically where they are and how they develop and evolve into this new period. So you'll recognize a lot of the same lists you'll you've seen before, but now with new dates on them, so that they can be used in the 18th century and with the changes and innovations that come from that. Um, there's, of course, uh, there's, there's the Maroons faction that we're going to be adding in. That's a new one that's pretty cool. Uh, that's one of the unaligned. Um, top of my head, that's 
most of it, but there's there's I think there's not most of it because there's a North American tribes. So there's a bunch of stuff, but uh, as usual, we'll, we'll probably end up putting too much. But um, but that's a. Uh, I'll go on for the next one. Go ahead. Uh, oh, you! I thought you were ready. You looked uh, like you were John ready for is, the next uh, one. <laughs> I am ready. I am okay, ready. okay, okay. There you go. Um, so are you familiar with Jack Aubrey? And will he be available? Jack Aubrey? Yeah. Is that like like the guy from Master and Commander? I think that might be. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that might be Master and Commander. So maybe not Master and Commander. Too. Probably not. This is a little, still a little bit outside our period. It's about a about a hundred years away, more or less. I think if I remember right, uh, from where we're at right now, in the in the setting. But that that I mean he's a fictional character, but we might make a nod to him. Is at some point, any, yeah. oh, wait, wait, yeah. well, what? is there any option for the mass on the new sloop to be straight instead of leaning back? I think that's just kind of us pushing it more than it is. It's it is leaning. No, it's it's sculpted that way. Yeah. So the rake of the sloop is pretty. Uh, it's something I wanted to do more in the resin model, and we weren't able to because of casting reasons. Although on, on some of my models, I dug the hole out so I could lean a little bit, but. Um, you it's, it's not good. it's not a difficult thing to at all it won't be a difficult thing to to do yourself uh because of the way the models yeah because the way the models done and put together it's got to be one way or the other more or less uh so but again it won't be the the way the rigging comes together it's it's in several parts so if you wanted to make it straight it'd be pretty easy to do with just some basic uh just a hobby knife and some hobby glue for the most part maybe a little bit of green stuff would the Maroons be their own faction? Yes, they'll have their own faction. Yes. There'll be new units for them as well. Would you ever consider adding flags in the sprue? We talked about this earlier today, actually. Yes. The problem with flags in the sprue is that they take up a lot of room. Um, I they'd actually be like that big. Yeah, they'd like, be pretty big, yeah. So they take up a lot of room in the sprue, and I feel like I'd rather put more bits that we can use to customize the ship so that you can make your ship look a little more unique or throw in extra weapons or things, you know, cannons and swivel guns and things like that that are probably more useful because really the paper flags with a little bit of work, I mean, you could check out, just look at the Blood and Pigment blog and look at what those guys have done with their flags. I mean, that's awesome. So it's, um, it's a pack of flags. And then, of course, to have plastic flags, and you'd have to have a bunch of them because you need French and Spanish and English and Dutch and and every pirate in existence, and of course, so <laughs> it would take a lot of space. And you know, maybe that's a product on its own. I don't know. We'll see. Um, will the log cutter still be drunk? Uh, log cutters are always drunk. They'll always be drunk forever. Yes. Some pirates will be drunk too. Uh, James Monson asks about Blood and Plunder Frontier, but I think we're gonna hold on to that one for now, just to keep this particular AMA we can thing. we can come back to it if, we, if it comes up yeah uh, does the force want to hear more about maroon I'm sure he does <laughs> so uh, I haven't done a ton of development on the maroons yet other than just reading about them but obviously they're gonna be really good guerrilla fighters that's what they were known for um, They'll be, they'll, they will have a similar play style to some of the Caribbean native factions or the Black Caribs. The Black Caribs are basically uh, more or less a type of maroon faction. So they're uh, the closest thing. If you're familiar with them, it's going to be a lot like that. They're going to have some new unit choices, like uh, some sharpshooter options and different things like that. So that's about the maroons. Oh, I actually saw this one earlier and I forgot to bring it up. I'm so sorry. Miguel Vega wants to talk about Barbary Pirates. Barbary Pirates. Something we're super excited to eventually get to. But for the moment, our focus is for on the Americas. And we want to run out the timeline into at least the uh, early 19th century. Um, that said, you know, based on how well things go, anything is possible, like I said earlier. You know, if we're able to, if we're able to float two projects at once, uh, I don't want to... I don't want to do anything in half measures that I that that we eventually plan on doing in big ways such as that. Uh, but Barbary Corsairs are something that we do plan on introducing when we eventually move into the American Revolution setting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so 
in that setting, it, it's I think it's the most fitting point at which to inject that group into um, into the relevance of the Americas. So at that point, we'll start to you'll start to see us branch out into more sayings because we really want to cover. Um, as I as I told somebody on Facebook not that long ago, if there's a if there's a period in setting that features uh, high seas adventure and swashbuckling and all that, we will be there to cover it at some point. So we're in this for the long haul. We're gonna keep supporting Blood and Plunder. The world of Blood and Plunder is gonna be endless, and uh, for years and years and years and years to come, you'll be getting new exciting stuff to play in. But we can't do it all at once, unfortunately. But we're working on it. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're, I'm getting a, a couple calls for cloth, flags, and, ma and, and sails, sales, yes. which is something we've kind of tried. We've mm. been working on that since the beginning. We've really, been but... lit for years looking for a good option for this. There's always, there's always some kind of issue. It's either too expensive or it just doesn't look good or it's just kind of, you know, it's, there's, it's just never right. We're looking for that Goldilocks uh, situation, and we are... We've had some. We have, we've we've been on some pretty hot leads on it lately that unfortunately didn't quite pan out. But um, some of our new friends at Bippy who are helping us make these new plastics have uh, they're actively helping us look. So we're we're hoping to find something exciting that we can. I mean, if we find it in the middle of this Kickstarter, you, you could bet that it'll be there as either included again depending on the cost, either included or as an add-on or something like that. But it is something that we very much want to do. We just need to find the right. Uh, material or or production method or what have you to make it to make it happen. In the meantime, of course, you could always check out uh, download section on our website has paper sales that you can cut out and make into templates or use the paper sales themselves on cardstock or something like that. And uh, they can look they can look surprisingly good even as cardstock. So a little of that of that uh, antique sort of mod podge stuff on there, and it actually looks you can make some pretty nice stuff. Um, okay, well, since you said that we're going to be doing Blood and Plunder forever, everyone's starting to well, imagine space pirates, and I think we're, I think, I think <laughs> we should call it at space pirates. Hey, I'm, I've, I'm looking at, uh, uh, you know, if we, if we get old enough for space pirates to become a historical thing, then, uh, we'll do it. We're definitely going to be <laughs> talking about, uh, Blood and Plunder Frontiers soon yes you'll, you'll see that in other spots you know right now we're just trying to talk about raise the black but frontiers is coming uh uh i could touch on frontiers correct terrain i mean break your own ships but also <laughs> we could i mean call for it enough and we'll look at it um space pirates obviously we're doing space pirates in you know seven years, ten years. probably i think that's a seven year plan yeah. I could touch on Frontiers real quick for those who maybe have maybe don't know what it is and are curious. Sure. Uh, so Frontiers is going to be the skirmishier version of Blood and Plunder. The, the official title is Blood and Plunder Frontiers, and it's designed to play on you know more or less a two foot by two foot surface, you know five to ten models aside, and it's um, a camp. It's it's going to be campaign focused as well. It's designed to maintain the. It's going to use the same stats as your Blood and Plunder units. So all the stats for your Blood and Plunder units are relevant, uh, and it's it's pretty it's pretty well designed at this point. During the pandemic, I had a lot of time to work on it and playing it by myself. <laughs> so uh, I, I I made a lot of traction on that. Um, but it's uh, it's going to basically be you know foraging small foraging parties. Uh, throughout the periods of Blood and Plunder, basically moving around and trying to accomplish things, and it's going to be it, you could you could kind of think about it as like a, a historical a pirate and American frontiers version of a game similar to Mordheim or something like that. Uh, so that's that's what Frontiers is. Definitely going to be something we're talking about more in uh, in 2021 once we get this project rolling and underway. So uh, stay tuned for that. What's all this typing you're doing? What's the next question? Mm -hmm. uh, will the cannons on the new sloop be metal or will they be plastic? Everything in this project that's a model will be plastic. The one exception is the string that comes with the ship. So the same string you've seen, the elastic string that we use for our rigging will continue to be 
uh, elastic string doing plastic uh, lines and ropes and such for the ship would be super impractical so we won't do that everything else is plastic hard plastic Casualty markers too. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Yes, casualty markers also plastic. Every model, without exception. Yes. Unless plastic we state otherwise. For also plastic. No, actually. No, no, not plastic string. Actually, the string <laughs> is not plastic. And no, it's not plastic. So, did you say that before? Yes, the string is not plastic. Yes, that's yeah. what I was saying. Yes. Thank you for paying attention. Please. I'm reading, man. I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> that's good because I literally have no chat We're on my screen. On I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Yeah, so with, if, you, if there's any more questions, feel free to get them in now. Um, but uh, otherwise, we'll be looking to wrap it up here pretty soon, as this is we're in 56 minutes uh, at this point. Fire. Russians. Russians, yes. So, um, Russians as, Blood and Plunder? Uh, we will eventually see Russians in Blood and Plunder, yes, because Blood and, uh, for those who don't know, the Russians did colonize, um, or make not, not so much colonize as much as had small colonies on the west coast of what is now uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, and they pretty much went all the way down to where they almost met with the Spanish in California at some points. And uh, that history is actually pretty cool. If you haven't seen it, look it up. But that's, uh, that's going to be – that'll probably be uh, in our next, next round of expansions. That might, that might be in there if I'm getting my dates right. But um, – so, so basically, the next big blood and plunder project, or the one after. Okay. Right. The mat and the markers. What are they made out of? Punch board and paper. Yes, the mat is paper. If you have our oak and iron starter set, it's the same mat, but the white side is going to have land terrain instead of just white. So uh, the punch board, is, all the terrain is punch board. It's two dimensional. You know, it's a uh, it's which is great, obviously for the shoals and stuff, and for uh, a land battle, it's get made. It's enough to get you started with some basic stuff if you don't have any miniature gaming terrain. And, you know, it'll be mostly stuff that's like rocks or, or trees, stuff that you could, you know, you could put some trees on top of it or some actual rocks and, and kind of work with it so that it's a, it's just a nice place to get started. What else we got there, Steve? Oak and Iron uh, expansions on the way? On the way. Yes. So Oak and Iron expansions... Is something that will be being worked on uh, pretty much in tandem with this project. We had a lot of traction going on that, and then 2020 kind of just derailed all of that. Uh, we have we have a few ships that have already been sculpted and already being worked on, uh, but uh, you can expect some new stuff for Oak and Iron. Uh, we're hoping at the end of this year, you know, knock on wood, just from the progress we've already made, just hopefully we can execute on that and get it going. Um, but uh, at the very least, like card decks and stuff like that, you'll probably see this year. Uh, but as far as actual new models and things like that, uh, put it, it's more likely we're going to see that next year. Baltic Black Sea expansion? Baltic Black Sea expansion for Blood and Plunder. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's coming sooner to Oak and Iron than Blood and Plunder. But yes, again, any, any time that there's swashbuckling, sea fighting, uh, skirmishy sort of action, we'll be on top of it at one point or another. Do you have a neoprene mat option for the sea terrain? No. Not in this Kickstarter. Uh, I We highly recommend, of course, to check out our friends at TableWar.com. They make the fat mats, the original mouth, uh, the original mouse pad mat, as we, we've got sitting right here. And uh, they uh, we've worked with them to create the mats that they've got. They make the, the convenient three-foot by four-foot sides, which works really well for blood and plunder land battles or smaller sea battles. Um as well as various other sizes as well. And they got all kinds of really cool terrain options, so check them out. Do you think the old gun ports will work for their new ships? Sort of. The gun ports are a slightly different size. Um, so uh, they will work. They're a little small. The new gun ports are slightly bigger. At least for now, we might tweak that a bit. But it's, uh, you know, there's when you're working with plastic, there's all kinds of little things you got to uh, account for, like the different... I don't, I don't know. I guess the pressures is that you could have, you don't want to have stuff dimple up and things like that. So, will the punch board terrain be larger than mm -hmm. Oak and Iron? Yes, yeah, it is. Well, some of the oak depends. There's obviously, there's a, there's a giant island in there. It won't be, nothing will be that big, but it's overall, it will be larger. Yeah, we're showing the Oak and Iron stuff in the, um, in the images, but it will actually be somewhat different because it'll be a different scale, obviously. So, it's not exactly the same. Um, 
but yeah, it's going to be slightly larger pieces uh, that, that make a little more sense for the two-sided nature of the terrain. So it'll work for your land or your sea battles and give you uh, some, some good terrain options. Um, so, well, Matt Price asked about uh, the plastic ship stretch goal. So we did talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's technically a possibility, but we'd have to do really well. Um, right. You know, we have one planned for the future of Blood and Plunder Raise the Black, but it wasn't in the scope of the Kickstarter, but we've done yeah. pretty well, a lot better than we expected. So it could be, it could be uh, in the scope of this Kickstarter. Yeah, if we do, if we do, again, if we end up doing way better than we expect, it's, it, I suspect it'd be something that comes in uh, maybe even in the last week because <laughs> it would have yeah. to be, we'd have to be really sure that we can pull it off in a reasonable amount of time. In order to, for us to be included in this, and so we don't want to, uh, we don't want this project to lag around forever. We want to turn this thing around as fast as possible, get it into your what we're doing, and new games and new things. And we just want to get it out there, get it done right, and get it done quickly. What else we got, Steve? Are you on the wrong page? There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are the different blood and plunder? The box of plunder items unlocked so each kind of commission item is unlocked through um whatever it says there right now we have we want 300 shares on our facebook page to get the word out on raise the black we want to see 30 of you sing sea shanties and if someone was to ask me right now i could provide one of those myself to help things get going and if the be the third one was, I want to see 300 people post all over the place, Facebook, Instagram, just pirate models that you've painted really well and that you want to show off. Once we have those, I mean, we'll be giving stuff out left and right. There's plenty more quests coming. There's a lot of cool stuff down the pipeline. And yeah, any questions, just keep them coming on the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Right on. Literally. Yes. <laughs> Literally. A video. Yes. Uh, for the new nations, when I, when we talked about the open iron releases that are coming. Yes, some of them. Well, I don't think we got into specifics, but but we're talking about trying to focus on Bloom for there for now. <laughs> Although I am very excited about our open iron releases. Will there be a campaign system for this game? Well, there already is, thankfully. So if, if you check out our No Peace Beyond the Line expansion, there is a campaign system in there that focuses on, um, on taking your commander through his career. It's kind of, uh, if you've played Sid Meier's Pirates, it's got a little bit of that flavor to it where you're starting out small, you're growing in reputation and influence and such, and then you grow and, uh, and get bigger ships and more crew and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. It's, it's well-designed by our good friend, Nate Zettel. And... Um, I know several groups. I, th I believe there's one group in San Antonio right now uh, going, through, uh, going through a campaign. And Riley Blair is losing terribly at it. He used to work for us and ran away to Texas. So. <laughs> They're down for it, Mike. They're down for it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to end this by helping uh, everyone try to earn some more Box, and pl uh, box of Plunder stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to close out with, I don't know, what shanty... What shanty do? Because we do sing a lot of shanties. That's how we keep our morale up. In the fire lock. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Basic? Should we do drunken sailor? You take, you do whatever you want, Steve, and I'll follow your lead. How about that? Move the microphone right. over here so we can get your beautiful voice on the camera. I love, I love both. I love both of shanties. That's not a sea shanty. Uh, okay, <laughs> so let's do... Take yeah, it away, what, Steve. What, what do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor, Steve? Well, what do you do with a drunken, drunken sailor? sailor? What, what do you do with a drunken sailor? sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Stick him in the cupboard with the captain's daughter. Stick him in the cabin with the captain's daughter. Stick him in the cupboard with the captain's daughter. Early in the morning. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Early in the morning. And that's go. what we have for you guys. That's one YouTube, we'll count that sea one. Sea shanty for you guys. <laughs> now we just need 29 more, and you can have those casualty markers. Let's get it done. Let's do it. See ya. Oh, that's ended, huh? There you go. Yeah. Now we'll see you. Thanks. Uh, wait, before we go, 
thanks again. We're so excited for the support, the crazy amount of outreach you're bringing out. And just uh, we're super excited to start getting to work and getting this thing done and turning it around. So thanks, guys. We'll be back for some more AMAs throughout the project and more stuff. We'll be, we're, we'll be all over the comments and trying to answer as much as we can, as fast as we can. So thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.